Welcome to DeFi News. This week, Europe getting into Solana staking, Solana outpacing Bitcoin and Ethereum in terms of its gains, and lastly, a Ripple exec commits $10 million to Kamala Harris and her campaign. Let's get into it. So Vanek, one of the largest institutions in the world, is actually going to be getting into Solana staking. So this is a big deal because now anybody, including institutional investors that want to be exposed to Solana, will be able to do that in Europe, in the European Union. Now, we're going to take a look at what my biggest concern for this is, where you can actually take advantage yourself by knowing a little bit about DeFi. But the key thing here really is this part right here where it says a 25% fee will be charged on staking rewards and the adjusted rewards will be incorporated into what's called VSOL or VanXOL uh, end of day NAV by 4 p.m. CET. See, this is where TradFi is gonna bring you in and it's all the same stuff, but you can actually get into this and you can learn this stuff and save yourself that extra 25%. And in fact, you can actually make a lit way more, not even a little bit more, way more when it comes to staking or what we call providing liquidity. Now let's take a look at Solana Dominance. Solana Dominance, this is a chart where it shows Solana against the rest of the crypto market. And we're starting to see that our key indicators are flashing green, flashing by. They have been since all the way back here in uh, October. 19th but on all three time frames that i personally look at this means solana is a buy in my opinion and it is a buy even against eth and bitcoin you can see here it's also above our blue line this is what we look uh for and also above our, this one's been above our blue line for quite some time against ethereum ethereum's been pretty weak lately but then we have solana btc which is you know, actually the one that I've been eyeing because I have a lot of holdings in Bitcoin and been looking to see if I was going to flip some money into Solana. Why would I do that? Well, the reason I would do that is because if Solana is going up against Bitcoin, then in the end, I can sell my Solana for most likely more, accumulate more Bitcoin and keep the uh, gravy train going there in terms of Bitcoin. My overall goal, get more Bitcoin, not more Solana. So if I see this though, this is the Bitcoin versus Solana chart. If I see this, I'm definitely going to start flipping more from Bitcoin into Solana. So that way I get exposed to higher upside. Could it come down? Yes. Is there risk? Yes, there is risk in crypto. There is risk in everything that you do. Even walking outside of your apartment, you can get hit by a bus but you're not gonna stop walking outside of your apartment because you're afraid of getting hit by a bus. So let's get exposed to some risk, let's understand risk management, and then let's go from there. So now, what can we do? I mentioned in the earlier article about Vanek coming out and saying that they are going to basically be staking Solana on behalf of its clients and in, on behalf of its investors. Now, they're probably gonna be earning about 5%, maybe six, 7%, depending on the emissions of Solana at the time. See, I'm not worried about a little measly 5%. That's not how you're gonna get wealthy in crypto. The way you're gonna get wealthy in crypto is by being the bank or doing what Vanek does, because they bring all these many billions of dollars, okay, into this Solana ecosystem, and then they take a small fee. But for you, you don't have that luxury, okay? So what can you do? You're not gonna get rich off 5% in Solana, but you can get rich by allowing people to trade peer to peer. And you can see here, this is a Solana ETH. So I'm gonna be putting in Solana and ETH into this pair. And right now, based on the amount of volume for people using my cryptos to trade it on the blockchain, I'm earning 85.29% that way beats out the piddly five to 7% that you're gonna get less the 25% fee uh, from Vanek, okay? Now, you have to know how to do this. 
By the way, if you want to learn how to do these sorts of gains and how to participate in these sorts of investment opportunities, there's a link down below. I have a webinar that you can watch at will right now if you're interested. And I'm going to run you through exactly how this works and how to practice risk management so that you keep as much money as possible. Now, we also have something called a managed vault and you can see here we're actually buying heavy. We have about $2 million right now in the managed vault and we have about $309,000 allocated towards Solana. So we're actually putting our money where our mouth is. This is what we call a managed option where you can deposit money on the blockchain here. We can manage it. You hold custody of it. That's what we want. We don't want to hold custody. We want you to hold custody of this money. So if you want to be exposed to Solana and using the strategies that we're using, this is one of the options. We also have a big stake in Bitcoin because Bitcoin, of course, is the King Kong daddy right now. And it is a very powerful crypto against all of the other cryptos. We monitor all those stuff for risk management on our side. Now, let's move on to the last article here. Ripple commits to company bipartisanship as co-founder Chris Larson donates $10 million in XRP to the Kamala Harris campaign. Now, there's been a lot of talk that Kamala Harris is going to be one of the most innovative crypto presidents uh, that has ever lived. And so we're we're keeping an eye on this. Will she? Will she not? I don't know. Biden, her predecessor, was very hostile towards crypto. I hope that maybe she's bringing a younger, fresher vibe to this and she's seeing the benefits to the economy using uh, cryptocurrencies, not CBDCs, but actual cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance. We know that Trump's stance is pro crypto, pro DeFi, but you never know. Uh, all of these guys or gals will be saying anything that they want to. But the crypto community honestly is a little skeptical about this $10 million of support just because the Democratic Party has been very hostile. We have people like Ben Sherman and Elizabeth Warren who have been very, very hostile. In fact, coming up with what they call an anti-crypto army, which means, you know, essentially they want bankers to win, despite the fact that, you know, like Elizabeth Warren has been talking about, you know, going against the banks and protecting your interests. Well, this is like the ultimate going against the bank. And when that happens, she's like, no way, Jose. Uh, I don't know. But here we've got this instant where uh, so somebody probably doesn't like Trump enough to where they're like, no, I, I'd rather put my money towards Kamala and see where we end up. And it could work. Who knows? Like I said, Kamala could bring a fresher vibe. I kind of thought the same thing that uh, Biden might do, uh, but he obviously did not bring a fresh vibe. He brought Gary Gensler, which has been the worst thing, in my opinion, to crypto. And I don't think maybe it's a Democrat or a Republican thing. I think it's just, you know, they say black, we say white, they say up, we say down. That's the way politics works, unfortunately, as opposed to people kind of coming together and doing, you know, like what's best for us. So anyways, guys, gals, let's see what happens here with this donation, with the election, with the elections coming up. Uh, based on poly market, which is what I'm looking at, it is not looking good for Kamala right now, but you never know. Look at Trump back in 2016. That was a major upset. I was totally thinking that Hillary was going to win and, uh, and it wasn't that case at all. So if you're interested in learning more about DeFi news, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and then go a step further, smash that notification button. So every single time we got something new coming up, you get notified. All right, guys and gals, see you on the next one. Cheers.